Hello and welcome to a brand new Mind Mastery video. Today I'm going to talk about recovering from schizoid personality disorder, um, which by many people isn't really considered as a disorder in the first place, which is quite understandable because a person who could be labeled as schizoid on the surface can lead a quite a functional life. They might be quite successful in their career. Uh, maybe even some of them can develop some relationships with other people. Um, so it's quite important to distinguish between someone with a schizoid character, which is, you know, just like introversion or extroversion, um, and someone who actually could be considered as having a disorder. So it is very important to draw this line between what could be considered as a disorder and what not. Um, there are different traits that relate to being a schizoid, and this includes things like flat affect. So a person struggles with emotional expression, struggles with actually feeling anything on the first place. Um, they might lack interest in other people because they simply don't perceive any reward from socializing, from developing different connections. So why should we do it on the first place? And many people like this could um, stuck in a low paying job, not because they don't have a skill or ability, they're usually really smart and intelligent people, but simply because they don't really see any point in progressing higher in their career or getting a better quality life than they currently have. Now we need to ask why a person has a schizoid. Why are they schizoid in the first place? Why do they have these different traits? The most common mechanism among all people exhibiting uh, the schizoid personality is dissociation. So dissociation is this ability to kind of tune out from their environment and tune out from own feelings, emotions. So a person basically ends up being kind of stone faced, not feeling anything, um, not really having any opinions or thoughts about the environment. Although those people who dissociate most of their life um, will be that skilled in dissociation that they will not know anymore that they are dissociated on the first place because they've been doing it for the, for the majority of their life. So this habit of dissociation is most certainly a mark of many different personality disorders. But when it comes to schizoid, um, this dissociative part, this mechanism of dissociation um, becomes a kind of independent part of the personality or even independent self inside one's mind. So that a person with schizoid assumes that when they are dissociated, and they don't know that they're dissociated, that this is their real self, this is who they are, and this is how, how they relate to the environment, because they think this is them. However, that's the trick with the dissociation, is that um, it covers the actual self, it covers the real self, hence they have a problem with identifying their feelings and emotions, connecting with other people, or connecting with their environment. This habit of dissociating develops mostly in childhood, um, not necessary where there's some abuse going on, or the obviously abuse contributes to, you know, dissociating on a regular basis. And obviously there are different types of abuse on the first place. So it's difficult to actually draw a line between what is considered as a childhood abuse and what's not. But when it comes to schizoid personality, uh, the key element that contributes to the child dissociating is lack of ability to connect with their parents or their family members or the caretakers. So, for example, when the child expresses some emotions or is excited about something, is happy about something, or maybe frustrated about something or sad, there is no person to go to and kind of express this these emotions and feel like someone understands us and someone shares the same emotions. And this lack of connection with parents um, is what causing a child to, you know, contain their feelings inside and eventually ignore everything altogether because there's no one there anyway. So what's the point um, 
to listen to one's feelings, to express their feelings if they don't really matter in the first place. So this is like the very basic of this dissociation that causes the schizoid personality. Um, but obviously everything is much more complex than this because then a child can develop different interpretations of what's happening to them. And the key interpretation is that there is something wrong with them. Um, because, you know, they're excited about something. They want to share something with someone and there is no one there. So there must be something wrong with them. Um, and repeated experiences like this will eventually cause this, you know, dreading feeling of loneliness and abandonment. So a child doesn't really have any means to cope with these feelings, these unpleasant emotions and reactions. And the only choice they have is to start dissociating. Now, obviously, when it comes to recovery, the most important thing to consider is that such person will need to stop dissociating. Now, this is a very tricky thing to do because if such individual has been doing it all of their life, they will not know what it means to not be dissociated, to not dissociate at all. That's why many people with schizoid will not even seek therapy um, because there's nothing wrong with them. That's how they are. That's how um, they've always been. Anyway, to kick this habit of dissociating, what we can do is to, you know, obviously start connecting with our bodies. So exercise, things like yoga or tai chi, anything that draws our attention to our bodies because such person will need to um, increase their ability to listen to their bodies, listen to, you know, various sensations and feelings and emotions because when someone is dissociating, their awareness or attention will be outside of their body. So even if they do try to focus on like their leg or their hand when, when dissociated, they will not feel anything because they are not in their bodies. They are outside, hence the dissociation. So paying attention to, to your body, do some exercise, things like this. That's, you know, really like a basic step, uh, towards kicking out the habit of dissociating. Now, things like mindfulness and meditation could be helpful. I would be really careful with this because generally it's just better to kind of be with your body, learn to stay within your body. So do things like, you know, yoga, dancing, etc., etc. Now, because people with schizoid generally struggle with knowing what they feel, knowing what the emotions are, and obviously knowing how to deal with emotions, um, the recovery needs to embrace staying with one's feelings and emotions. So that's another exercise to do uh, whenever possible to simply figure out what you feel. Pay attention to your feelings, pay attention to sensations in your body, pay attention to what happened before that perhaps induced some change in, um, in your body. And most importantly, we need to like, remove this blockage of not expressing one's feelings and emotions. So the easiest angle to do it for a person with a schizoid is to do it with anger. Now, from what I've read on the internet, many schizoids will struggle with anger. It's like the dominant emotion, the most apparent emotion within the schizoid personality, probably because during childhood, all needs were frustrated. So a child, you know, cannot connect with others. They are ignored. Uh, they are, you know, very often dismissed um, when trying to express their emotions. So obviously this is going to cause anger. Now to express anger doesn't mean to, you know, shout, abuse other people or throw stuff around, but simply saying out loud that, you know, we cannot tolerate this. We are not going to tolerate this. And this hurts us. Can you please stop doing this? And so on and on. This actually allows us to release this anger. And for a person with a schizoid, that's the angle for them uh, to learn catching up their emotions and trying to express them properly. And once they're able to do it with anger, it should become um, easier to do it with other emotions as well. So this is pretty much it for today. I know there is much more to say about recovering from schizoid personality, but I just focused on this very basic stuff. 
if this is something you found helpful, if this is something you are interested in, I might do a second part of this video because there is many more things to cover uh, since it's a very complex path of recovering from schizoid personality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.